Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make these powerful hand rolled capacitors out of aluminum foil and mylar sheeting. These capacitors are easily capable of storing around 10 joules each which is extremely impressive when you consider that they're made for pennies on the dollar. Now the main two materials you're going to need to make these capacitors are aluminum foil and mylar stencil sheeting. Here I am using mylar sheets that are 6 mil or 150 microns thick, giving the sheets a dielectric strength of anywhere between 40 and 60 thousand volts. The reason that mylar is able to achieve these impressive values is because of how it is configured on the molecular level. Chemically, mylar is known as biaxially oriented polyethylene terephthalate. It has the same chemical formula as the plastic in water bottles, however it differs due to an important manufacturing step where the polyethylene terephthalate sheets are stretched in two perpendicular directions while being heated. This aligns the polymer fibers of polyethylene terephthalate into a planar structure which is responsible for the unique properties of mylar. In these capacitors, we will take advantage of the high dielectric constant and impressive dielectric strength of mylar to allow for higher operational voltages and greater capacitances than those achieved with other plastics. Starting off, we take a sheet of mylar and lie it flat on the workbench. Take measurements of the sheet and cut two pieces of foil with both lengths and widths of at least two inches shorter than the plastic. This is done to mitigate losses through corona discharge as well as to prevent any potential discharge through the foil sheets around the dielectric wall. Here, the plastic sheet is a 12 by 12 inch square and I cut my foil pieces even smaller than necessary, around 8 by 9 inches. Doing this will ensure a higher voltage rating at the expense of a marginally lower capacitance. You can see I also cut the corners of the foil off as an easy measure to reduce the number of points where the voltage gradient could be highest. As a result, we avoid points where electric fields exceeding the dielectric strength of mylar could appear. We now take a strip of copper tape and cut it down the middle. Taking one of the halves, we fold it in on itself sticky side in, leaving the ends separated. In attaching this to the first foil sheet, we can make a leg of the capacitor. Now I know that this process of using copper tape seems gratuitous with any stripped wire on hand, but there's actually a very good reason for it as I'll show later on in the video. With one half of the capacitor done, we repeat the process for the other plate, first placing another sheet of mylar, then the next foil sheet, and finally attaching the second copper leg. Now all that's left to do is tape some of the foil down and tightly roll it all up. Rolling the capacitor doubles the plate surface area and in turn the capacitance. It also allows for a much better compression of the layering than when laid flat. Measuring with the capacitance meter, we see that the capacitance is well over 10 nanofarads. To test these capacitors, I'll be using the rectified output of a flyback transformer driven by a ZVS circuit. This flyback has an internal Cockroft Walton multiplier which steps the voltage up to a measured 40 kilovolts when 20 volts is fed to the ZVS circuit. Since doing this comes close to damaging the flyback, I'll just be feeding up to 17.5 volts, placing the operational output voltage closer to 35 kilovolts. With one rolled capacitor in parallel with the flyback, discharges become extremely loud, even damaging to the ears without protection. A capacitor at full charge here stores nearly 10 joules of potential energy, easily life-threatening if not handled with the respect that it deserves. When we throw four of these capacitors together in parallel, the magnitude of the stored energy becomes much more apparent. Now as I mentioned earlier, there's a very good reason why I'm not using wire legs for the capacitors in this tutorial. I'm specifically using copper tape with a conductive adhesive to make a complete connection to the foil plates of the capacitors, something that does quite well even at high voltages. 
Comparing to a capacitor that I made with wire instead of tape, we can quickly see the problem. At the voltages used and in the pulsing manner shown, wire contacts arc to the foil plate. In a single charging and discharging, this is a benign defect, but with tens of pulses a second, these arcs rapidly tear into the foil and heat the plastic dielectric to the point of failure. I'm well aware of the disadvantages of the copper tape legs I used, such as flimsiness and the hurdles of construction, however they completely negate this destructive aspect of the stripped wire. The last thing I'd like to show you guys has little to do with the actual production of these capacitors and frankly is more of an example of where they falter. Regardless, for something I stumbled upon by accident, it's quite cool to see. When you pulse one of these capacitors in dim settings and watch the edges of the foil plates, you can clearly see centimeter long streamers extend out, hugging the surface of the mylar sheeting on either side. This is a symptom of the great dielectric properties of mylar, but is also a clear sign of the leading problem with all hand-rolled capacitors. The corona discharge made visible here is an excellent producer of highly reactive ozone, which means that even with the most conservative measures, hand-rolled capacitors inevitably fail after long-term use. While this could be fixed by submerging the capacitors in oil or flushing them in an insulative atmosphere of sulfur hexafluoride, doing so would be beyond the simplicity that these capacitors are made for. Thank you guys for helping this channel reach 4,000 subscribers. I know it's been a while since I was active, but this and a couple other videos are being made to combat that inactivity during my upcoming semester at school. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.